and now we have to deal with microplastics, but if you're an avid shooter, you also have to deal with lead poisoning still. All right, so we're here today with Huxworks Manufacturing, formerly they're going to show us their newest silencer, their newest addition to their 762 line of suppressors. Silencers, suppressors, same, same thing. A great outtake reel. I like a whole much longer <laughs> to video all the outtakes. So they are showing us their newest addition to their line of suppressors. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. So this is our Ventum 762. This is our new 762 cam. Uh, we have a Flow 762 tie up here, so you can kind of see a visual difference between them. Uh, the Flow 762 tie is 3D printed grade 5 titanium and the Ventum 762 is a 17.4 stainless tube with a grade 5 titanium core on the inside. Now obviously one of the main differences you can tell is I can actually take this apart. So the end cap comes off, we have a 3D printed grade 5 titanium core and then your tube here. Now one other thing that's different about this can is you'll notice on the back end it is hub compatible. So if you've already picked a muzzle device brand that you are familiar with when you're married to per se, uh, whether it's a dead air device, Yankee Hill or ASR or Q or even uh, Reardon, uh, this will take all those adapters in the back. Uh, there will be a list of compatible muzzle devices and hubs that are posted uh, on our website with this can as well. So you can check and make sure that your setup will work with the suppressor. So, Fully assembled, this suppressor comes in at about 15 ounces, uh, 1.8 in diameter and 6.7 long. Uh, rated all the way to 300 rum, and it is full auto rated for the guys asking. No minimum barrel length either, so it's pretty hardy. Having been super familiar with the 7.62 TI, tie, tie, same. Know, which one it is. My biggest questions are performance wise, are you expecting any differences? between these two cans given that they're both similar size? So we will say, you know, companies rate their products on a good, better, best scale. You've seen a lot of people do that, right? Uh, we like to believe we don't do good, we do better and best. This being best, this being better. Mm -hmm. So very similar properties, uh, very similar flow through, a little bit different uh, optimization of the insides to allow it to work well with other brands and muscle devices. So you keep that, that flow through. Um, it won't be as good as using our muzzle device on our designated can where the core is printed to work with mm -hmm. that, that muzzle device. So you really get the right amount uh, of flow through the can to reduce that back pressure back in the gun. Now you still, being flow through, huge reduction in back pressure. I want to say it's like a 4% increase in bolt speed on gas guns. Okay. So it's still negligible. Yeah. Um, still have the, the, you know, the, the lack of gas back in your face, you're going to run cleaner. Uh, no having to tune the gun to run suppressed, no guns with the required. At the end of the day, shooting suppressed, you know, everybody looks at their mags, and they're all coated, coated in carbon, you know, they're all black. Still don't have that issue running this can as well. So if there were people out there that were holding back on purchasing the 7.62 Ti due to the pricing, uh, you know, you know there were, we've had customers voice that they felt like they were priced out of the 3D printed right. can market. Um, would you say that this can's a good option for them to get into that? Yeah, that we style of, of suppressor. We jokingly have a term for the, the 3D curious people, the people that want to try it. They're like, ah, it's a little too expensive, or you know, how do we fix it if there's an issue? Well, remove a core. If you have an internal strike, send it in, we put the core and send it back to you. So that's an easy way to fix it. Uh, but yeah, so people that are kind of hesitant to get in because the technology is still new, even though we like to say that it is proven. Uh, there's a lot of our cans out in the wild in circulation, whether in civilian hands or, or in contracts for, for military law enforcement. Uh, I will tell you this is a good way for somebody who wants to get started and be able to have the versatility with a 30 caliber suppressor running a 300 blackout, 76239, 308, you know, even your 556. Um, do all that for a, a lower price point than what is currently being offered on the Flow 7625. We're out here on the range now with the Huxworks Ventum 762, the newest addition to their flow-through line of suppressors. 
uh, right here. Uh, you heard us say before, it is a titanium core with a 17.4 stainless body. It is a little bit cheaper than the Flow 7.62 Ti. So let's see what the bang for the buck is. Oh, and it's hub compatible. So for the first time you're seeing a direct thread Huxworks can. big things I notice when I'm oh, I'll the train. All right. It's very low back pressure shooting on the AR-10 and you don't really get a lot of gas to the face. So what I was saying is uh, typically with especially the AR-10 platform it's quite susceptible to being over gassed due to the volume of the cartridge. One of the things that we find is that these flow through cans really help avoid getting excess gas. Really great cancer causing chemicals being ejected right into your face. You know they say our grandparents had to deal with lead poisoning, and now we have to deal with microplastics, but if you're an avid shooter, you also have to deal with lead poisoning still. We, you know, we can't like live vicariously enough through our grandparents and the lead poisoning they got, so we have to get a little bit of it for ourselves. Of course, Huxworks Safety Company, it's in their name, are helping us fix that. A little bit less lead, a little bit more lead downrange. That's a good slogan. Works. All right, so we switch it out. We're gonna be trying the Ventum 7.62 on this amazing Noveski chainsaw, 3 and blackout SBR, 794 barrel. These are, we showed you the direct thread mount before, but even more special this time. For the first time ever, a Reardon Atlas and flash hider running on a Huxworks can. So 124 grain supers, See how they sound. <laughs> that sounds really good for being supers on such a short barrel. I'm actually super impressed. I was impressed with the supersonic 300 blackout on the Flow 762 Ti as well. Um, so they did say that this one has a little bit higher back pressure. It seems like you're probably working with a little bit of restricted internal geometry there. Um, I think that that's probably helping out with these lower volume cartridges. Um, the 308 was super impressive. However, this supersonic unit blackout is also very impressive. Uh, we're gonna move to some subsonics to see how those perform as well. So we're moving on to some 200 grain subsonics from Cellier and below, S and B. Let's see how they sound. So, based off of the sound performance there, quiet. Last up in our lineup for testing this new can is the venerable 556 cartridge, the bane of both titanium and 762 cans together. We were really impressed with how the Flow 762 Ti did with 556, so we've got high marks for this can to beat. I mean, that sounds a lot like what I remember the 7.62 Ti sounding like. Uh, it sounds really good. Even without Ear Pro, it's not super harsh. Uh, even though they said it's got a little bit less back pressure flow through design working. Unlike the Flow 7.62 Ti, there's not quite the same portage, is that a word? Portage going on on the front of the end cap right there. Um, but even though, even despite that, when I'm shooting it, I'm really not getting any gas coming out here to the chamber. This is a factory Sons of Liberty Gunworks rifle right here, so um, it's not an adjustable gas tube. Therefore, we're getting the full brunt of a 11.5 carbon gas system right here um, with this can. 
super pleasant to shoot. Uh, of course, we're noticing just right here, we're getting pretty dark. There's a little bit of sparking. Uh, however, with all of Huxworks's titanium cans, we're typically looking at a three to 400 round count break-in. So the carbon can really saturate the interior of that can and prevent that sparking that happens on a freshly 3D printed titanium core or titanium internal structure of that can. And we can attest that we've seen that break-in process all the way through to fruition and it does work. We'll put the cans like 400 some dollars less than, than its predecessor. And on all the guns that we've shot, it performs, in my opinion, just as well as I remember the Flow 762 Ti performing 